So in this tutorial we're going to look at three further circle theorems that we're going to prove using the idea of similar triangles. Now these circle theorems are to do with side lengths so they're particularly useful when you've got missing lengths and you refer to these theorems in order to find the missing lengths and solve the problem. So let's start with a circle and we're going to start with a theorem uh, that we can call the tangent secant theorem. So start with the tangent, let's draw a radius and 90 degrees to the radius a tangent. Now let's draw a secant. Now secant, unlike the tangent, crosses the circle, crosses the circumference of two points. So let's draw a secant down and intersects with the tangent at this point here. So now we can label up our diagram. So we've got A, let's label it like this, A, B, C, and the outlying point here we'll call D. So the tangent secant theorem says that the square on the tangent, so AD, is the square on the tangent is equal to the outside segment of the secant, so this length here, the outside, times the whole of the secant, so CD here. So let's write that down. We want to prove, problem A then, that the square on the tangent, so we'll say prove that the square on the tangent, so AD squared, is equal to uh, the outside, so BD, times the whole of the, segment, uh, of the secant, so CD times CD. And to prove that, there are basically three steps. The first step that we're going to do is draw a few more construction lines. So if I draw down from this point here, C down to A, and across, let's erase actually the radius, across now from A to B. And then what you need to do is look at what you've got and see if it reminds you of any classic theorems that we've already proved. Well, in fact, what we've got here is a classic setup for the alternate segment theorem. So let's have a look at that. The alternate segment theorem says that between uh, a chord and a tangent, uh, the angle between a chord and a tangent is going to be equal to the angle subtended by the chord in the alternate, uh, in the alternate um, segment. So in other words, up here. And in fact, they look the same, and that's because they are. They're congruent. Now, does that mean all the angles are the same? Well, all the angles must be the same. Um, in two triangles that we're going to pick out here, and let me just show you the two triangles. The first triangle is obviously this small one here, but the second triangle is not this large one here. If you look at the angles between these two, they are very different. Rather, it's the larger triangle compared with the smaller triangle. And this gives us the idea of similar triangles that's essential for the second step of the proof. So let's have a look at that. If I shade in this triangle here, the second triangle that's similar is going to be, if I just draw a different colour down here, it's going to be the overlapping larger triangle like this. Okay, so let's write this down we are saying that these two triangles are similar so what have we got we've got triangle abd has the same angles as in other words is similar let me use this symbol like that is similar to the larger triangle acd and what have we used to show that well we've used the idea that they're common, so there are common angles here. If you've got two angles that are the same, so you've got these two angles are the same, plus these two are shared, so right here, then the third angles must also be the same. So you only need two angles to show that triangle ABD must be exactly similar to triangle ACD. Let's put the major uh, theorem that we used, which is the alternate segment theorem. But you might also want to say that uh, we've also got common angles uh, ADC and 
ADB are common. So that's the first step. Now what I'm going to do is take the colour tracing paper and just move it over to one side so that you can see even more clearly than this that they are similar. And that will help us with the second step. So if I just move this to one side and rotate it round, so it's orientated like this, and then reflect this over to the right, there you are. You can see they're definitely similar triangles. The angles are the same. Now, if they are similar triangles, then what we can say is the ratio of the sides must also be the same. It, in other words, if this was, say, 1 and this was 4, then this would be a 1 quarter, a 1 to 4 relationship, or 1 fourth, uh, because this is 1 fourth the size of this. And that would be the same for these sides as well. So you had, if you had this was 1 and a half, then this would be 6, and so on. In other words, they're in direct proportion to each other, so we can compare the sides. Now that's a very, very useful idea and gives us the second step of our proof. So step two, we're going to relate the sides. And if we start with the tangent AD, so we can say therefore AD, AD is this length here, which corresponds to this length here. And what's that? CD. So we can express that ratio as a fraction, which must be equal to now let's compare two other side lengths. So what do we want to compare? Let's look at BD. And BD will compare, so that's this length here, to this length here, which if I rotate it around, is again the tangent. So BD compares to the tangent. So the fractions must be the same. Okay, so setting up the equation is the second step of this proof. And once we've done that, the third step is simply algebraic rearrangement. So how do we do that? OK, well, we want to remove the denominators here. Let's start with CD. So if we multiply both sides by CD, we'll get, uh, we'll cancel on the left-hand side, so we just get AD. And multiply the right-hand side by CD as well, we'll get BD times CD divided by AD. Finally, if we multiply both sides by AD to remove AD on the right-hand side, so if we multiply both sides, then we'll get AD times AD, which is AD squared. Okay, AD times AD, AD squares squared now on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we cancel with the AD, just leaving BD times CD. And that was what we set out to prove, so we proved what we set out to prove. This was what, uh, which was to be shown. Okay. So that's, those are the, the essential three steps for proving these theorems. And the first theorem that we proved is the tangent secant theorem. So let's now move on to the secant secant theorem. So if we draw a secant down like this, and another secant going across like this, we can see they intersect outside the circle. Uh, let's first of all label up the points on the circumference. And now let's label the outlier E, the point where the secants intersect. So what have we got to prove? Well, the secant secant theorem, a bit very similar, in fact, to the uh, tangent secant theorem. This time, though, we say the uh, segment on the outside times the whole of the uh, secant. So the outside times the whole is equal to the outside times the whole of the other secant. OK, so let's write that down. CE then. CE times the whole of the secant, so DE, is equal to, again, the outside, so BE, times the whole of the secant, so AE. And that's what we need to prove. 
So once again, let's join up the points. And you might want to pause the video at this stage uh, and see if you can recognize the shape that you've got, the classic theorem that you're going to use to prove similarity. And you might even want to go on to complete the proof. OK, well, well done if you gave that a go. Uh, let's see what we've got then. So first of all, let's connect D and B, and now A and C. And what we've got here is what looks like a bow tie theorem. Now, if we're looking for similar triangles, this triangle and this triangle must be similar, but that's no good for our theorem because we want to include these outside segments. So in fact, the two triangles are here and here, these overlapping triangles. OK, so let's write down triangle ACE, we're saying is similar to triangle, this larger one here, uh, BDE. Now, why? Well, first of all, again, as previously, we've got a common angle, so there's one. But this is the bow tie theorem. So the angles subtended by the same arc, so this arc here, the angles subtended by the same arc must be congruent. So this angle here must be congruent with this angle here. Once you've got two angles, by the sum of angles, um, by the sum of angles theorem, sum of angles adds up to 180 in all triangles, so therefore these two angles here, ACE and DBE, they must be congruent as well. So we've definitely got similar triangles. Okay, so just to be clear why these are similar triangles, and just to abbreviate all of that, I'm just going to say. We've got common angles, I'm not going to write that down, but we've also got the bow tie theorem saying these two angles here, they must also be equal because they're subtended by the same arc. Okay, so that's step one completed. Let's just move our similar triangles. Again, if we rotate this one here and reflect this one here, we've lined them up now, you can see they're definitely similar, the angles are the same. Now all we need to do is compare the sides. So let's have a look. So we've got CE, so that's this side here. CE corresponding to this length here, which has got to be BE. And we want now, so we had CE. Uh, so it's this smaller blue one here. We need to be careful that we're comparing in one direction only, so from the blue to the pink in this case, so C, E to B, E. Now what we want to do is look at, yeah, so let's have A, E, this long length here, to D, E. Okay, now we can remove our colour tracing paper, and move to step three, which is resolving this equation. Okay, so rearranging, multiply both sides by BE, and that cancels it on the left-hand side, leaving just CE equals BE times AE over DE, and if we multiply both sides by DE, we will end up with CE times DE on the left hand side cancels on the right, leaving just BE times AE, which is what we set out to prove. Okay, so one final problem. Okay, let's draw our circle again centre here, but we're not going to use the centre. And at this time we're going to not draw secants and tangents, but instead just chords, but 
chords that intersect, so two chords that cross over. So let's draw one across here and another down here. Okay, so this is the intersecting chords theorem. And the intersecting chords theorem, problem C, that we have to prove. So we have to prove this one. That was the proof. And we're going to prove this one as well. So the theorem that we're going to prove is if we label this up A, B, C and D. Uh, the theory, intersecting chords theorem says that the lengths here, the segments, the two segments of each chord, if we multiply them together, that will equal the two segments multiplied together of another chord. So in other words, what we're trying to prove is if we label this E, AE times CE, whoops, there we go, times CE is equal to BE, in this case, times DE. A very useful theorem, and one very often that uh, comes up in an exam. So well worth learning all three, but particularly this intersecting chords theorem. So again, we want to look for similar triangles, and a good point if you wanted to pause the video and see if you can complete the proof yourself. Okay, so now we need to join up the points as the first step in our proof. So let's join up, uh, let's join up D and C and A and B. And immediately we can see we're going to use the Bow theorem again. Uh, so we're going to say that triangle ABE similar to triangle CDE. Why? Well, both theorem tells us that these angles must be the same. And in fact, tells us that these angles must be the same. So these angles must be the same as well. Okay, so. Or you could say these are congruent because they're vertically opposite. Either way, these are definitely um, similar triangles. Okay, so we don't need to bother with coloured tracing paper this time. We can see very clearly the correspondence. So let's go ahead and complete the proof. Okay, so let's say e, e, sorry, AE corresponds to DE, therefore AE over DE must equal, let's say, BE over CE. Which gives us AE is equal to BE times, multiplying both sides by DE, we get BE times DE on the right hand side of CE. And finally, multiplying both sides by CE will give us AE times CE equal to, cancelling on the right hand side, BE times DE, which was to be shown. Right, now, for part B of this video, I want to show not only how they can be proved, but also how useful they are to learn, simply because they often are turned into algebraic problems. So we're going to find missing lengths now, and we're going to extend these geometric ideas into algebra. Okay, so that's often done uh, in, the, in a question like this. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is um, add a few more lines. So if we draw a line up to there and across to there. So we might be working on a problem here, but then we have a, a bit of algebra that we need to solve this area here. In fact, if I just erase up to here, you can see that sometimes it's difficult to see what, you've, what you're dealing with here. 
don't forget to look for the tangent and the secant and then you'll realize there's a relationship between the tangent and the secant and that we're dealing with the tangent secant theorem so let's keep it nice and simple to start with two examples i think that we're going to do we'll start with the tangent secant and then we'll look at the secant secant and how that can turn into algebra uh, in this case what i want to do i think is well let's just start by labeling labeling this length here let's call this two and let's say this length is what we're trying to find and this length here i'm going to call root 10 because often you'll get certs you get lengths expressed as certs so we're going to call this root 10 so we've got root 10 is from here to here we've got two from here to here and the chord from here to here so the chord notice is x it's the length that we want to find maybe because we want to solve something in here so we might be using this length here to solve extra problems within the circle all right so that's the setup um, but what we're practicing is the tangent secant theorem so let's write that down to start with so it's tangent secant and if we've learned that theorem well we'll know how it works let's now label this y equals 2 and z equals root 10 because if we set it up algebraically then we can put the values back in and solve for x okay so what does the tangent secant theorem tell us well it tells us that the square on the tangent is equal to the outside times the whole of the secant so in other words z squared is equal to okay z squared is equal to y squared not y squared just y now be careful here y times x plus 2 so the whole of the secant so x plus 2 so now we need to just plug in our values and we can solve for x so root 10 z equals root 10 so root 10 squared is going to give us 10 on the left hand side y is 2 so we've got 2x plus 2 expanding the brackets we've got 2x 2 times 2 is 4 so we've got 2x equals 10 minus 4 or 2x equals 6 or we can divide through by 2 giving us 5 equals x plus 2 Either way, we get x equals, subtract 2 from both sides, 5 minus 2, x equals 3. So nice and simple algebra, um, very easy to solve, but we couldn't make any progress with the algebra unless we understood thoroughly the tangent secant theorem. Okay, now lastly, let's have a look at, well, let's use the secant secant theorem. So secant and a secant intersecting at this point here and a little bit of extra uh, complication here so it might be that we're trying to solve something within here um, but what we need to do is solve for x so there's a little bit of algebra introduced into the problem so let's put some values on here let's say this is x now let's say this is x plus 2 so make it a little bit more interesting and let's say this is x and what should we have here let's say this is 4 and this is 2 so we're trying to find out what x equals and we're going to use because we can see it very clearly the secant secant theorem so the secant secant theorem says what Well, it says that the outside times the whole of the secant is going to be equal to the other outside times the whole of this secant. So we can just, let's start with the outside. We can write that down algebraically straight away as x, so there's the outside, times, not x plus 2, and that's the danger here. It's the whole of the secant, so it's x plus 2 plus x. In other words, 2x plus 2, so 2x plus 2. 
equals, again, be careful, not 4 times 2, but 4 plus 2 is the whole, so it's going to be 6, and the outside is 2, so it's 2 times 6, so equal to 12, and now we just need to solve for x. Well, 2x times x is going to give us 2x squared. And x times the 2, distributing the x across to the 2, we get plus 2x equals 12. So we've got a quadratic forming here, which means quite likely we're going to get two solutions. We'll come to that in a minute. Let's just solve the quadratic first. So we've got uh, all of these values, the coefficients and the constants, are equal to, uh, are divisible by 2. So we're going to divide by 2, giving us x squared plus x Subtract 12 from both sides, uh, it's going to be plus, it be equals 6, but I'm going to do, do this straight away, minus 6 equals 0. There we go. So putting it equal to 0, we get x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. Now, we can factorise uh, this to solve for x. So if we factorise uh, our quadratic, we'll get x plus 3, x minus 2, nice easy quadratic, equals 0. And that means, using the 0 principle, that x plus 3 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0. Well, if x plus 3 equals 0, x must equal minus 3. Now, we can dis discount that solution, because in geometry you can't have a negative link not in conventional geometry. So we can say that one of the solutions doesn't make sense, so we discount it. So the other solution is when we have x minus 2 equal to 0, which gives us x equals positive 2, and a positive length does make sense, so x equals 2. So just a little unusual situation, but one that very often comes up, that if you get a quadratic, easy to form a quadratic from these kinds of, uh, from these theorems, the way they're set up. If you get a quadratic, you get two solutions, then remember you can discount the negative and just give the positive solution. Okay.